Hello everyone, we are Group 9 representing 4 Contractors Incorporation and will be explaining our project, the Electrical and Computer Engineering Building from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign for the course CEE 498 Construction Equipments and Methods. We are the 4 Constructors uh, Group. We are a general contracting firm located in the Urbana, Illinois. Our services include general contracting, construction management services, and design consulting. Our core purpose is to build sustainable structures and make a difference in the lives of our clients. Uh, the core values that we hold are the teamwork, integrity, safety, commitment, and sustainability. As our name goes, we are a team of four people. Uh, uh, our project manager is Sultan and our project estimator is Alim Khan and our project controls engineer is Rizwana and our project manager is Rachitra. The Electrical and Computer Engineering Building on the campus of University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign vouches for its net zero energy category. It stands to be one of its kind in the country for its passive and sustainability aspect. It is also targeted to get the LEED Platinum rating. The ECE building is a $9.5 million project that is expected to be completed in a timeline of two years. The 230,000 square foot building is designed by Smith Group Architects. The project is located on 306 North Wright Street in Urbana. It overlooks on the north to the Beckman Institute and south to the Nick Holoniak Micro and Nanotechnology Laboratory. It neighbors with the Coordinated Science Laboratory on the east and the busy south right street on west. It is adjacent to the north quad and the building sits well and creates a complex of engineering buildings with landscape spaces for students. The Electrical and Computer Engineering Building is symbolizes advancement in technology and academia. The purpose is to construct the new technologically equipped ECE building as per the design given by the Smith Group Architects. The construction needs to be undergone with proper scheduling and coordinated strategies. The building will cater to lecture halls, to smaller classrooms along with dedicated informal student study spaces. The building also includes the Granger Auditorium and world-class laboratories. It will be a mark of growth in terms of technology for students learning ECE. The building also targets on net zero energy efficiency and also affirms on LEED Platinum criteria. For Constructors Incorporation's prime objective will be to create a comprehensive, multi-phase, efficient construction plan for the electrical and computer engineering building. We explore step-by-step -step report of different phases required from site clearance to interior finishing with optimized processes, timeline, and protocols. The project aims to phase out in the following over a span of two years mobilization, site work and excavation, foundations, superstructure, exterior cladding and roofing, mechanical, plumbing and fire protection, and in the last, the framing and interior finishes. Here you are able to see our site boundary, uh, where we have uh, red line we are going to install chain link fences where we will have where we have these blue lines we are going to install slide gate open on our right street side also we marked by yellow line our building boundary and we are going to have one main gate from the north squad here by where we marked by gray line because some people come from the uh, Clark Street and the Stoughton Street side and they will have they will have access to the construction site from the North Quad. As I said before, we are going to use chain link fences for our side boundary. The fence will be installed by manually on the ground. Also, we are going to use two slide gate open. Approximately the length of the chain fences will be 1,500 feet. 
height will be 6 feet. Generally, you know, one roll of chain link has 50 feet and we need 30 rolls in total. We have three types of signage in our construction site. The first is uh, public. This type of signage has uh, general information for public, such as what type of project is it, who is the owner, where is the location, who is the architect and contractor, who is the map consultant. Also, uh, this <coughs> public signage has construction timeline information. The second time is, uh, type of signage is uh, construction. Uh, this type of signage has warning for pedestrian and for people who are in a construction site. Uh, we are going to use this type of signage in a construction site, also in a north squad and uh, also in a right street site on a pedestrian zones. Also, the third type of uh, signage is a traffic signage. We are going to use uh, this signage in a right street site like warning for drivers and for traffic road a road of traffic and the pedestrian right street will be open for both ways for traffic uh, however uh, we are going to close uh, pedestrian uh, in construction zone for safety purpose you can see it uh, from the map, we marked the pedestrians which we are going to close by a red line. Also, we rewrote of uh, pedestrian uh, on a right street and marked it by green line. Field office and the temporary storage. We are going to use North Squad for temporary storage uh, because uh, north and the south side of the building will be used by crane for installation work. Also, we are going to install field office uh, on the right street side because it will be quick and the convenience access for people who come to visit uh, construction site. Loading and unloading areas for traffic. Right street between Clark Street and the White Street will be unloading zone for traffic. Traffic can use Right Street between Clark Street and the University Avenue and the zone between White Street and Springfield Avenue for loading. Potential truck route for material delivery. Materials will be delivered from prior materials on the Springfield Avenue and the Springfield Avenue will be used for truck route. It will be fastest and the shortest route and there are not much entertainment facilities compared with the Green Street and it will help avoid traffic during the rush hours. However, truck drivers should be very careful in a campus town. The first thing that we do on the site is to mark the site utilities that are already existing on the site. So uh, we took the drawing and then figured out what are the different utilities that are present and color coded them. Uh, um, the red one indicates the electricity line uh, followed by blue or cyan that indicates the water service line and followed by the sanitation line and storm lines. With the rough idea of utility lines on the drawing, the contractor responsible for excavation actually called the on-call center by dialing 811 and further connecting to the local one-call center. So uh, with one call center, they scheduled a utility locator service and within the duration of two working days, all the public utilities on the site uh, is, was marked. Uh, the renovations used on the site was uh, following the guidelines of American Public Works Association. And um, following by this, we figured out who are all the owners and we coordinated with them. Uh, with respect to the electric and gas, uh, it was the Omeran and for water, Illinois Omeran Water Company. Uh, with respect to the sewer lines, it's the Urbana Champaign Sanitary District. Uh, for the telephone and cable, we had to uh, call a couple of people and figure out who is the owner and coordinate with them. So the companies uh, we coordinated uh, for the details like the buried depth and 
um, we also uh, uh, took their assistance for redirecting the utility service lines. The process of site clearance, which involves clearing the site of any pre-existing structure, unwanted materials, clearing away vegetation, and to level and prepare the ground for the planned construction works. Uh, in case of any possibility of hazardous material existence, professional disposal experts may have to be hired and a waste management plan uh, have to be devised. Uh, uh, in our case, we didn't require any of this, but yeah, necessary approvals had to be taken before uprooting the trees. Um, the major equipments that were used are the mulchers and movers. They were used in combination to clear the vegetation and any unwanted rubbish from the topsoil. Um, and we also used the bulldozers to uh, tilt the top layer of soil in addition to earth moving, leveling and grading. Uh, the jackhammers and drillers were used to remove the pre-existing uh, or to demolish the concrete pavements. Uh, we did use the site surveying equipments like theodolite and uh, total station uh, to carry out the survey works. With reference to the site demolition plan that we had, uh, we came up with a list of uh, um, um, uh, structures to be demolished, which includes removal of any utility service lines, including the storm lines, sanitary lines and irrigation lines, and other uh, landscape elements like uh, the concrete walk and base, uh, asphalt pavement and base, the brick pavement and base, as indicated in the drawing. Uh, we also had to remove the light pole and see, or the signs that were uh, present on the site. Um, uh, as the drawing shows here, the pre-existing <clears throat> pavement and landscaping materials were uh, removed from the site. For excavation works, we considered the nature of construction uh, since it is a, um, a institutional building and then we did consider the load limits on the access roads, the geographical conditions and the nature of the terrains, the digging depth uh, and the lifting capacity. Also, we considered the provision for hydraulic attachments, the bucket size and capacity, boom reach uh, requirements and equipment co costing estimates. With all this consideration, we concluded to use a 40,000 pounds standard crawler excavator whose rental charges in Champaign area is about $955 per day. Followed by, we also require dump trucks. Minimum of five dump trucks are required with load capacities varying between 12 to 14 cubic yards. Uh, the purpose is to haul the excavated soil and we also need a couple of bulldozers to um, facilitate earth moving and grading. Excavation facing plants are required to undertake timely excavations and keep equipment in check. After the site clearance is achieved using mulchers, the utility lines which are to be maintained are rerouted. The excavation begins from South Right Street as it is vehicular accessible and starts from part A, the northern side, to the south side, that is the part B, as seen in the diagram. The excavation quantity as per calculations, including swell factor of 20% and slope as per OSHA considerations, is 55,200 cubic yards. For this project, we require two excavators to begin working simultaneously. The west side or the south right side provides access, hence the start of excavation happens from the red zone, while the second excavator starts excavating from the northeast or the blue zone as shown in the figure. Both the excavators work to complete the yellow and the purple zone, completing the excavation and exiting through the green zone or the ramp for the excavators to move from storage that is marked as the cyan to the excavation. A slight slope is maintained throughout for drainage and extra seven feet is excavated on lift well spots. Also, the red lining all over the perimeter of the building is for sheathing. The site needs to be prepared for truck dumping of excavated soil and bulldozer movement. The mid region of the site needs to be clear for bulldozer and truck movements as well as excavator movements which has already been indicated on the plan as green. 
the site's existing utility lines need to reconnect to the new lines and everything needs to fall in place. The irrigation lines for landscape also needs to be established and manholes are marked for maintenance and accessibility. Hence, all of these trenches are required to be excavated along with the excavation of the building. The demobilization plan is required to remove any equipment and machinery from the site towards the gate or the temporary storage. The plan shows us the two excavator movement across the excavation and their exit routes to the temporary storage area. The excavated soil can be reused for landscape and the residual can be sent to the national site material of Champaign. The uprooted trees can be rooted again and involved in the landscape design. Foundation is a crucial part of a building of structures that transfer the load from superstructure to the ground level. Generally, there are two main types of uh, foundation systems, shallow foundation and deep foundation. The foundation system of a building should be designed and constructed in a way that it can sustain and transfer the dead load and the post load to the ground level without any damages or issues to the structural elements above the foundation part. Uh, analysis of foundation system or building depends on several factors such as uh, nature of the structure, how the uh, building look like and uh, how many floors on it. The second is the load from the superstructure of the building to the uh, foundation system. Uh, also, uh, it depends on, also on the structure of the building itself. Uh, maybe it's a column based or wall based. Also, it uh, depends on the characteristics of the soil uh, in the surrounding area, whether it's uh, solid uh, rocks, maybe, or some uh, sand or any other material. So, it also depends on, the, on this type of material. The ECB building is a four-story uh, building. Uh, the, the structure of the building consists of uh, uh, columns and beams. And also it has a basement level. So here we can apply uh, spread footings under each of the column. And also we can construct the basement foundation from the concrete wall. Uh, by the perimeter of the building. Both uh, concrete uh, basement foundation and uh, spread footings, both are uh, cast in place concrete. Spread footing is a shallow uh, foundation type that has a wider part at the bottom of it and it uh, spreads the load from upper structure and provides to the structure of the building better stability in that area. Uh, basement foundation is a structural wall uh, that bears the load uh, from the superstructure as well on footings that locate it uh, along the perimeter of the building. In order to construct the foundation system of ECB building, we suggest utilizing the following list of equipment. The first one is excavator. Uh, it needed to perform the excavation and backfilling scope of work. Since the CB uh, building has uh, two main parts, part A and part B, we can apply two excavators uh, to start from uh, different parts of building. Uh, second is a bulldozer uh, needed to remove the soil and level it to the required depths. Third one is a backhoe or loader. Uh, it's used in construction process for multiple reasons, from cleaning the site and demolishing wastes and loading it to the dump tracks. Uh, compactors will be needed for uh, compaction of the soil before we do concreting of the foundation system. Uh, dump tracks to transport required materials from or to the construction site. Uh, then concrete track or concrete pumpers uh, to uh, to do a concreting scope of work. Uh, also, 
crawler or terrain crane uh, in order to lift uh, the materials temporary or permanent uh, like uh, phone works or rebar system construction of the foundation system of ECB building will start uh, from the south right street on the uh, building area A and will go all the way and down to the uh, area B and will finish the same site on the south right street equipments uh, will be entering the uh, construction site by the ramp which goes from the also size south right street uh, at the middle of this between uh, area A and area B the construction of the foundation system of ECB building we will start from installation of the temporary steel sheets outside of building perimeter in order to prevent the construction site from the ground slope and then after that we will start to do construction of concrete uh, footings under the concrete walls and columns of our basement foundation and then after that uh, we'll do uh, concrete walls together with the integrated columns uh, so concreting of the uh, basement uh, concrete walls we will do in even order so it means like after we complete the first span uh, we'll go to the third one so missing the second and after it uh, has been cured we will start the second, fourth and sixth. After we completed the construction of the basement foundation on the area A of ECB building, we can start the, uh, to do work on the uh, concrete spread footings uh, under, under combined uh, structural steel columns. Uh, so after that we can uh, start to remove uh, the temporary material such as formwork after the concrete is being cured uh, and uh, lastly we can perform the backfilling uh, scope of work on the territory inside of ECB building till the uh, bottom elevation of the slab and do the compaction uh, of this territory by the layers Foundation demobilization works includes removal of temporary structures that was used during uh, construction of foundation system, such as phone works, earth retaining wall, and etc. Also, it includes uh, removal of construction equipment that no longer needed uh, for construction of superstructure part of the building, such as bulldozer, excavator, grader, backhoe loader. So this equipment, uh, will, after completing the part B of the ECB building, will go uh, to the exit by the ramp, uh, which is in the middle of uh, part A and part B, and will be stored on the temporary storage, storage location or uh, permanently exit the construction site. Next step in our construction plan is the superstructure. Uh, with reference to the drawings, we identified the components that are required are the steel columns, typically originating uh, from the uh, footing, and we require the beams and girders. Along with that, we also require the hollow structural sections, the HSS, and the wide flange columns and beams. Uh, we identified that there are shear or movement connections established by bolting. Uh, the other component that are present is the composite uh, floor slabs, which could be metal decking, concrete reinforced floor slabs. Equipment for superstructure. The main equipment for superstructure will be boom lift and a truck mounted crane. Uh, boom lift carry people for erection work while a uh, truck mounted crane will be used to install columns and the beams. Uh, boom lift is a type of aerial platform used to get workers off the ground 
to work on elevated project, this construction lift has a bucket that's typically large enough for one to two workers to stand in. Wheels or continuous band of trades are used to make the machine mobile. The crane that lifts the bucket is operated by a hydraulic lift system. Boom length of truck mounted crane allowed to move columns and the beams for maximum distance and the height. Also, truck mounted crane could move materials on construction site and the access to pick and place. The ECE building is conventional steel erected superstructure. The facing plans look over from the delivery of the fabricated steel structure to the site storage and staging areas for the erection. It is expected that a superstructure is one among the longest faces and hence the material storage is priority and needs plastic sheets for resistance against harsh winters. The facing plans also need to consider the crane movements for lifting the steel structures and the concrete mixtures during the concrete pouring stage. All columns up to the first floor are bolted onto the foundation and then girders and beams are connected. This is done for all five floors and then the metal deck and concrete pouring takes place. As you can see in the figure, the, we have divided the facing plan into three phases. The first phase being the north and the second phase being the south and the third phase being the bridge between the north and the south face. The exterior wall system of the ECB building consists of a long list of materials. Uh, first of all, it's a concrete masonry unit all the way on the perimeter of the building. And then the insulation layers placed on the um, concrete masonry unit. And uh, on the metal studs on it, it's installed the terracotta panels. Also, it has uh, curtain wall system on the east, uh, south and west side of the building and on the north side it's uh, represented with uh, windows. A long list of equipment can be used for erection of CMU wall, placing insulation material and installing metal panels. So the first one is a telehandle or forklift uh, in order to lift the CMU blocks or panels to the desired level floors and locations. Uh, second one is uh, this automatic scaffolding system, which will be used by the labor in order to move from one floor to another, from one height to another, and to perform the erection of CMU uh, wall or insulation. Uh, and the third one is the uh, hand tools, uh, such as trowel, hammer, screwdriver, or other miscellaneous tools that's going to be used during this. Uh, work. As you can see on the picture, uh, construction of the exterior wall will start from the part A of ACB building uh, on the west side of the building and go to the part B and will finish also on the west side of the ACB building part B. Uh, construction of the CMU wall will be performed firstly and will start from the first floor and go up till the fifth floor will complete there uh, on each side of the building and then uh, the second part is uh, placing the insulation layers to protect from the moisture and uh, the exterior wall and then installation of studs and metal panels on it terracotta panels uh, and then, uh, Simultaneously, they may be performed with the installation of curtain wall and the windows uh, on each side of the building. It also start from the part A and go to the part B. After completion of exterior wall, uh, CMU wall, uh, and the crew can start to work on the interior wall con construction and. After completion of it, they can demobilize.
Our roofing system consists from seven layers. As you can see from the pictures, first layer is metal deck, second layer is vapor barriers, third layer is protection board. Also, we have two layers of insulation. After insulation, we have protection board and our top layer is TPO roof membrane. TPO is a single ply membrane composed of polymer and a filler blends reinforced with a fabric screen. The thermoplastic may include polypropylene, polyethylene, or co polymer polypropylene. TPO is manufactured in a sheet form with width of 10, 12, and 20 feet and uh, is also used on low slope and flat roofs. The usual thickness of TPO are 45 mm and 60 mm. It's a common misconception that thicker is better. Other factors like uh, isolation benefits the TPO layer and the amount of thermoplastic above the screen are more likely to add to the quality of your roofing membrane rather than just greater thickness. There are two primary options for attaching TPO membrane, mechanically attached and fully adhered. In our project we have fully adhered system. Fully adhered system are bonded to the substrate using a contact adhesive applied to both the membrane and the substrate. The substrate under the membrane is a cover board. A weighted roller is then used to press the membrane onto the glue on the insulation below. The system is fully bonded to the substrate, which eliminates issue with belong, makes it less prone to consideration under the membrane and makes it more energy efficient. When the membrane is rolled out, uh, the contractor then returns and uh, uses a hot air gun to hot air weld the seams together. Our roofing system has solar panels. 950 solar panels cover two levels of the building rooftops. 60 solar panels dedicated to research use. At their peak, they can produce about 275 kilowatts. The system generates about 25% of the building's electric, electrical consumption. Moving on to the mechanical section where we give a brief information on the heating, ventilation and air cooling in the project. The building has the conventional forced air delivery using an air water system. The designer and the engineers have collaborated to install a chilled beam system as the primary way for cooling the interiors. This sort of mechanical system takes advantage of the convection and pumps chill water than cool air throughout the building. This represents about 10% of the building cost reduction when compared to a conventional HVAC system. The building also features high efficiency motors that circulate air that allow for cooling and heating. These motors are smart and only run fast when required, hereby dropping energy usage by 80%. To add on, the building also features occupancy sensors, hereby reducing wastage of energy and mechanical system overuse. The building also houses the optical laboratory, a high energy and heat generating functional area that is justified by a process cooling mechanisms. The other systems used are listed here. Once all the HVAC specified systems along with the manufacturers are established and approved in the submittals, the phasing plan is developed to way before the construction takes place. There are stages of mechanical that needs to be undergone simultaneously starting from site clearance to the interior works. The phasing plans for the mechanical system here are categorized into five phases. The first phase uh, is the site and foundation ties phase. In this phase, the HVAC system, especially heating, maintains the existing steam lines from the Beckman Institute. This also integrates creating a steam tunnel during excavation phase. The HVAC installation also requires a working electrical layout to be ready by the testing phase of the HVAC system. Moving on to the phase one. Or the second phase is the equipment installation. The equipment installation is required to be initiated after the sub superstructure is completed, but before the exterior cladding is finished. This way it ensures the heavy machinery such as chiller plants, FCUs, BCUs, pumps, heat exchangers, and air 
air handling units or the AHUs are placed using cranes, forklifts and scissor lifts from the site to the respective positions. The equipments are then placed in the MER rooms located in the basement towards the north. The AHUs are distributed between the MER room on the southern side of the basement, which holds about six of the AHUs, and the rest of the four AHUs are placed on the rooftop. The second phase is distribution and roughens. Uh, in this phase, after the equipment is established, the ductwork begins to convey the air and water movement to the destined uh, conditioning of the spaces. The duct sizes are calculated and established in the submittals, which are received on site for installment. The ductwork requires hand tools and duct lifters for installment. The duct, the ductwork being plenum leaders, main, secondary, or branch or runout ducts are installed. After which, roughens such as diffusers, lures, exhaust, return, and supply grills are installed. A special ventilation system is installed in the Granger Auditorium where the vents are placed under the seats. This reduces sound and keeps it well ventilated. After this phase is the phase of testing and calibration. Once all the devices and fixtures are in place, electrical connections are provided and all installments are ready to be tested. During this test, we test out chillers for their temperature, fan speeds, um, coil, coil functional, and even quality control and checking is done. Uh, it is essential to note that the ECE building is BIM supported and is automated as a cohesive unit accounting for its sustainability feature. This also requires connection of the mechanical systems to be associated with other systems such as electricity, security and fire protection components and requires testing for the same. This figure explains the equipment as well as the connection which has been established in the MER room on the, in the basement of the building. The water and the steam supplies are obtained from the existing site utility lines and are connected through heat exchangers and pumps to regulate the flow rate. These are then connected to the chiller plants which regulate refrigeration. These equipments are very heavy and need to be placed on a stable support raised from floors. Hence, the concrete supports for these need to be placed before the equipments are brought in and is usually done during the superstructure phase. This supply is then carried forward to all AHUs which are marked in purple and then are supplied towards all associated systems such as the fan coil units marked in green, blower coil units marked in brown and chilled beam systems. There are other units as shown in the image, such as unit heaters, uh, radiators, and cabinet heaters. This figure shows us the ductwork that takes place on the first floor of the north wing. The ductwork takes place and first starts from the installation of the ductwork vertically through the shafts which are marked in dark blue. Then a main supply duct is horizontally laid and the branch ducts of smaller sizes are laid towards the spaces to be conditioned. Once these are in place, runout ducts are used to connect to the terminal air distribution fixtures such as diffusers, vents, grills or the chilled beam system. This slide translates what we just discussed in the vertical flow, where we have vertical duct passing through the shaft indicated by the dotted lines. If you see in the dotted lines, all of the supply air ducts are terminated and turned upwards. Uh, this diagram also shows us the supply air which has been marked in blue, the return air duct which is marked in red, and the chilled beam system, which is marked in cyan. As mentioned earlier, the AHUs are then categorized in serves zones according to function and HVAC system. Hence, they are divided by clean room supply, laboratory or the process cooling supply, chilled beam supply to classrooms and lecture halls, supplies to the fan coil units and blow coil units, and also supply to common areas. So the number of AHUs um, denote the number of functional zones that they have been serving. 
this these diagrams uh, on the right and on the right hand side show us the water riser diagrams uh, and on the left shows us the understanding of how a chilled beam system works Hedgehog equipments are quite heavy uh, and just to give you a sense of scale, uh, the image on the right displays a AHU unit and hence requires machinery to be assembled in the MER rooms. We use cranes uh, to lift the AHU units to be placed on the rooftops, which we have four AHU units and other, uh, other lifting equipment such as forklifts or scissor lifts to move other equipments, other HVAC equipments throughout the site and from the storage areas to the working site. Duct lifters are also a great equipment used during the installment. Other handy tools are listed. This slide uh, shows us a few additional preparations that which we might require for the mechanical section especially when you are storing these heavy machineries or ducts it is very necessary that the location has to have a solid foundation it should be vibration free and all the equipments need to be plastic covered uh, any place where we store the mechanical systems whether it is a temporary storage or even the MER rooms these rooms should have a solid foundation where no mechanical strokes or shocks are are found or created during the handling operations then we have a few more essential pointers that we need to remember during the duct work is that all supports or hangers to be used are for 300 mm of any 40 inch or 90 inch bend duct and screw drops will have threads in either directions to level the duct work after and in process of installation, we need to make sure that none of the ducts are distorted, buckling or, ha or have any sort of dents on them. The last phase in the mechanical section is the demobilization. Once everything has been tested, the labor and the equipment needs to be cleared from the side. The forklift and the scissor lifts can be directed towards the interior finished stages and all extra metal scraps from the duct installation and other mechanical system installations need to be cleared. At the last, the supervisor needs to ensure that all pipes and ducts have been symbolized and there are no distortion or dents found on them. Here is a list of tools and equipments required uh, to install the plumbing and fire protection systems. We do require an excavator to uh, excavate the soil and lay the water main tie-ins. Uh, and a forklift is required to transport materials within the same floor. Um, and scissor lifts are required. Along with that, uh, I have listed few um, hand tools that are required to install the plumbing and fire protection systems. Uh, in this slide, I have highlighted the plumbing systems and components that are present within ECE building. Um, uh, the figure here shows the northern part of the basement plumbing plan. Um, the systems that are running within the uh, building is the domestic water system, which is highlighted in blue. The green highlight shows the water treatment piping system. The red highlight shows the sanitary drainage system and the purple one shows the compressed air piping system. Along with it, there are other few systems like this uh, storm drainage piping system and specialty piping systems. Moving on to the installation part, the first step is to prepare to have thorough knowledge of the plumbing code, the UPC codes, and uh, second is to have a detailed audit of uh, drawings and specifications to figure out what is the location of the main and service entry points, what are these pipe sizes, what is the material used. Third will be the long lead fixtures. So we need to figure out what is a prescribed fixture manufacturers. So this can be obtained from the uh, plumbing fixture schedule and other drawings. This section here talks about the facing and sequence. Uh, piping penetrations are to be coordinated with foundation or concrete contractor. Early roughens are provided at the service entry piping as utility lines passes through or under the footing or foundation wall. 
uh, the drain tile system roughens are to be provided before the basement pour as it passes through the footing. Uh, the sump pump and other tank roughens are to be provided before the four slab pour. Restroom plumbing roughens and uh, the fixture pipings are to be mounted before wall construction and finishes. Stand pipes and roof drain roughens are provided on top of the roofing slab. Um, and there are also con condensate traps provided at two portions of exhaust fan and they are routed within 10 feet of primary roof drains. The figure here provides the drain tail details and the condensate trap details. Moving on to the phasing plan, to facilitate the installation of plumbing systems, the whole building area is divided into three zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, and along with the staging area. So the staging area is to facilitate just in case of, uh, you know, transferring any material from different floors. So the staging area could be of help. Uh, and, and the work can take place in zone one from the northeast towards northwest direction. The section here talks about the fire uh, protection systems within ECE building. Uh, it has got two sections. One is the fire detection system, which is an automatic detection system with sensors uh, that are designed and installed as per the standard plan. Second is the smoke detection and barrier system, where the sen sensors are there to detect smoke and activate an automatic alarm system followed by uh, an activation of barrier systems. All the floor assemblies are designated as two hour uh, fire or smoke barriers. One hour fire barrier is provided at the exterior walls and two hour fire barrier is mainly provided at the elevator region, the stair walls and the interior walls. Moving on to the fire protection system, which consists of a well-designed sprinkler system, which suppresses the fire in the event of any fire accidents. The fire protection line with different sprinkler systems are designed for each floor based on their requirements. The general type of sprinklers used are upright, resist, pendant, dry resist, pendant, horizontal window, and dry sidewall. The finishes could be rough brass, stainless steel, and white. Uh, the make that's suggested in uh, this building is Viking. The models may vary as per the drawing. A detailed sprinkler schedule can be referred to identify the types of sprinklers to be used at different locations. Moving on to the system layout and connections, a six inch fire protection main line from Beckman Institute enters the new ECAB basement mechanical room. At the basement north, a three foot inch drip line from automatic drip wall is connected into a two inch drip line from the fire protection main. At the first floor towards the south, the sidewall sprinklers are routed along both slides glass wall of a clean room under the second floor. Similarly, Connections are established in each floor with the floor fire protection system plans. The phasing plan includes establishing fire um, pipeline segments on each floor following by the installation of rises and sprinkler systems before closing the ceiling. The figure here shows the different types of sprinklers that are recommended for different areas within the floor. Moving on to the phasing plan, to enable easy uh, installation of fire protection systems, the whole building can be divided into three zones, zone one, zone two, and zone three, along with the staging and handling area. The staging and handling area can be used just in case if there are any equipment or any materials that has to be transported from different floor levels. And uh, uh, on the zone one, the work can be started from the north a northeast and move towards northwest and similarly towards south in zone two and towards east in zone three. Next is the demobilization plan. The scissor lifts can be retained to further facilitate uh, light fixture installations and sealing grid tile closures. Uh, fork lifts can be retained as there will be a lateral transfer of interior finish materials within the floor. Any hand tools specific to plumbing and fire systems like uh, plumbing wrenches, plumber's torch can be removed from the site premises. Further, they can be uh, surrendered at the storage area to uh, enable maintenance process.
The interior works in this report are divided into walls, ceiling, flooring, and special features. The typical, typical component of an interior wall system is studs, tracks, U-channels, firing channels, and L-headers. The, the common uh, or the typical interior wall assembly is the CMU blocks or an aluminum framing along with insulation and then different claddings that we see throughout the project are gypsum board, granite cladding, terracotta interior paneling, cement board, and matte plank ceramic tiles. Different ceiling finishes that we see throughout the project are acoustic metal ceiling, acoustic tile ceiling panel of two feet cross two feet, gypsum board, and wood panel acoustic system. Few of the interior details, special features that, that are there in the project are architectural light shelves, custom millworks, demountable partitions, and interior niches for lightings as well as uh, audiovisual setups. As mentioned previously, this is an interior view of the lobby and you can see that there is a granite cladding, the rain screen interior cladding, interior glazing, the gypsum board as well as ceramic tile mat plank. The ECE building holds the Granger Auditorium and hence has its own special interior works in terms of acoustic and aesthetics. Few of them are acoustically treated interior wood system, which has ceiling as well as linear applications on the wall, custom millwork, AV credenza, uh, acoustic fabric stuck panels with butt joints for wall and ceiling, cement board and matte plank ceramic tiles, laminated clear glazings, terracotta interior panels, lowered screen partition walls. As you can see, these are a few details for the acoustic ceiling system detail as well as the acoustic screen interior wall detail uh, with the lures and the terracotta interior wall paneling detail. As mentioned in the previous slide, these are the acoustical wood panel systems, the fabric acoustical panels, the screen lured wood partition assembly and the carpet flooring uh, just for a visualization sense. On to the uh, facing plan, the sequence of interior framing and finishes within each floor should follow work streams based on the constraints specific to different areas. The whole building area shall be divided into phase one and phase two as shown. Uh, a total of two construction hoist lifts, um, which is used to tra transport personnel and materials vertically throughout the height of the building and four forklifts can be utilized to transport the framing materials, dry walls and other interior finishing materials. Uh, materials to be lifted to phase one zone are temporarily uh, stored in the temporary storage area one and are lifted vertically uh, using construction hoist lift one. Similarly, phase two is done on the other side. Stabilization plan, the ladders and the scissor lifts can be removed from the site on completing the ceiling works. Um, the forklifts which are used to transport materials laterally within each floor can be removed after finishing the works like tiling, carpeting and installing plumbing fixtures. All the other essential hand tools can be removed from each floor and surrendered at the main storage area to enhance the maintenance process. Um, the construction hoist lifts, any um, uh, mobile crane or any other scaffoldings can be dismantled and removed from the site premises. And the final closeout works can be taken up, uh, like the floor cleaning, uh, collecting debris and removing the excess material from the site and prepare the site for the final inspection. We have now come to the conclusion of our project, the electrical and computer engineering building. I uh, hope our comprehensive multi-phase construction plan was informative for you and thank you.